Welcome to our channel, Urbana Chateau. This is Carol and Parma, and I'm their daughter Vivian. My parents sold their house in Colorado, both set out to fully retire, and decided to purchase a French provincial house in the same town that I'm completing my master's at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. Renovating this quaint 1941 house will be the project we work on together until my parents can safely travel out of the U.S. to fulfill their dream of living and owning property in Europe. We will be renovating the foyer, staircase, and orangery to name a few in order to bring this home back to its former glory. Join us as we tackle projects, design interiors, and explore the beauty of this historical area in the Midwest. It's the first warm day with sunshine in months. I mean, literally, at least two months. So this is amazing. Yes. We're going to get out in this neighborhood that's new to us, but so interesting because it's a historical neighborhood in Urbana. Yeah. And we have so many projects coming up that we thought it would be a good idea to introduce ourselves a little bit, talk about why we're doing this in the first place, because we have a lot of content that's coming your way and we want to make sure everyone knows who we are and why we're doing it. So I have, um, you know, I'm going through this change in my life where we're going through this pandemic, which has been affecting everyone. Then I'm also retiring, which is pretty cool. And um, trying to fill our time between when we want to go and do some real big traveling and now we decided to work on this project with Vivian and Christian, which is um, kind of a lifetime dream, to be honest, because I grew up in those days, or maybe it was later in my teens, when it first started with this old house and um, Bob Vila and Norm. And, um, you know, I just watched that thing and it didn't matter if they were working on a door or they were, um, fixing up a kitchen, it didn't matter. It was all super interesting to me. So, you know, you think about these things, would I ever be able to take an old house and restore it? Necessarily gut it, that's not what we're trying to do. We're not trying to gut the house and make it modern. Right. We're just trying to restore it to whatever the closest it could be to when it was built in 1941, or plus or minus, because that's not easy to, totally easy to date. We were looking at other houses, but what made you want to choose this one? Well, you know, I really wanted that mid-century um, cedar home that we looked at. Yeah, that one was which amazing. Which I thought would have been the ultimate. Um, it was built by one of the professors here at Urbana who is a pre professor in architecture. And it had a lot of personalization to it, some of it quite funky. Yeah, it was but, funky. But um, that one didn't work out. Mm, shame. So we kept looking and we didn't really want to buy something this was a little bit higher price than we were wanting to go for but we said no this is it we love that french provincial architecture to be honest i've only seen two or three houses in all of urbana champagne that are french provincial yeah although we haven't looked everywhere so there's more to see obviously it just looked like it'd be a lot of fun and the walk view here out the front oh, what's window this? Oh, how library? cute! It's a library, a neighborhood library box. Oh. Let me look and see if there's a bird guide in here because I want a bird guide. I'm assuming a lot of these houses in this part of the neighborhood go back to late 1800s. Not, not all of them, but some. You see them here and there mixed in with every um, era of houses from your craftsman house style to um, colonial, post-World War II, um, but there, you still see a few Victorians stuck in here and there. You see the street is cobblestone, not really, it's not cobblestone, it's brick. And that is just cool. Definitely not the professional DIYers. We, we can't do a lot of stuff, but if you go back, going on 40 years ago with our first house or our second house that we bought in Hawaii, we did a lot of renovation on that. As a matter of fact, you know, there was never a time when there wasn't a project, never. Yeah. And that's not just inside the house, but outside as well. So we really love to do our landscaping and our gardening and 
we don't do it very formal. We have what some of the landscapers have called a menagerie that we create in the yard with just a lot of volunteer plants that live where they are, they grew and on their own and so forth. But we just like to build on that and make it fun. And then in Colorado, we also did a lot of work on the house. To date, we've renovated seven different bathrooms. Wow. And that includes, you know, everything from floors, walls, you know, tile, toilet removal, replacement of bathtubs or showers or upgrades. And so we've done mm, three kitchen remodels, I believe. Wow. And, you know, I think we do pretty good. Um, it's not too homemade looking. If you look close, you might find something. But in general, <clears throat> how much money do you think you've saved? Bye. Oh, I, who knows how much money we've saved. Uh, hundreds, hundred thousand plus, for sure. So we have a few little skills that we're gonna put to it. We're not gonna do anything too major here. So we're gonna, lots of painting, wallpaper, bathroom tile, kitchen, upgrade. But the landscaping, Yeah. oh my God, we wanna rebuild that stone wall that has no mortar in it, it's just stone stacked wall um, by the street and really put in some cool, cool plants. So we really want to landscape. That's what is one of the most fun things. We want to get at that stone wall that's in the front. There's, it's just a short stone wall. There's no, by the sidewalk, no mortar, but we need to replace that stone wall. And then think about some new shrubbery that's not so pruned. Um, yeah. And I'm gonna try to even revive some of the super pruned shrubbery to look a little more natural. Natural. It's very and rectangular right now. A lot of the houses in this neighborhood have that same, this historic neighborhood have that same type of stone. So obviously it was a, something that was done back in those days. And we wanna restack the wall make it straight, some of the areas have fallen down, and really take care of the shrubbery, which is super over pruned, and I suppose if you want a very formal looking um, garden, that would be the way you would do it. But we well, like it a little more bushy and wild, a little bit more, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna try to revive some of the pruned bushes, over pruned bushes, and others I'm going to replace with grasses, which I see as we walk around this neighborhood, this historic neighborhood, I see that the grasses grow really good. Yeah. So I'm looking at landscaping to see what's growing really good in these houses so that we can get to that front yard. Now the backyard is a different story. It's really literally spooky because it looks to me like it's the whole backyard is years if not decades of leaves that have built up on the ground of the wall, uh, of the floor of the backyard with ivy grown all over it. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you tackle that? I tried to rake some. You can't rake through ivy. The rake gets caught as soon as you take the first stroke. So, and then on top of that, there's trenches, probably for drainage, that are built here and there. And then the weirdest thing is holes you'll be walking in the backyard on all that ivy and everything, and then your foot just goes down maybe six, six inches into a hole. I've seen the dogs walking in the backyard and just pop down. Yep. So we think that those holes, I have a theory that the holes were once trees that rotted, died, and the whole tree trunk rotted, and that wasn't filled, backfilled. Could be wrong, could be another, reason yeah. that's my theory the neighborhood here is just amazing we're told that the bulk of the people who live in this neighborhood work for the university which would make complete sense yeah we're right on the edge of the university like literally right on the edge um, but researchers professors administrators that's what seems to be making up this neighborhood in general so that's kind of interesting and it's been fun to hear what the neighbors do and so forth lots of dogs that get walked which is good for us 
this street here is just so quaint with these old houses. I'm so what, what we're hoping is that over the next three to four months, and it could be longer, it could be shorter, is that we can accomplish major um, restoration of the ground floor, the, the main floor of the house, and then the outside. And then, as time permits, and maybe it would be us doing it, maybe it would be Christian and Vivian doing it, but there's a lot of opportunity upstairs in the, with the main bathroom, which now is split into a little um, original dressing room next to a very small bathroom. So what would it be like if those two were combined? Now that's when we start to get away from the original design of the house. So we don't know that that's necessarily gonna happen, but it's just an idea. I think that sometimes, you know, times just change so quickly over the decades. And so major changes like a bathroom needing a small area for the actual toilet, shower, and sink, and then that other half being where the wife would get ready with her makeup yeah. and vanity area, that's uh, probably no longer needed nowadays. So I think making changes like that makes sense. And of course there's some dreams there. You can imagine those dreams have a few little things like a chandelier and a bathtub. a bathtub with claw feet and so forth. And then we get into those um, decisions of restore old salvage architectural elements or buy new. So there's pluses and minuses to both. So you have this house, you know that you're gonna do all these renovations. Why not get an apartment and like buy a condo and just renovate the condo? What's the real reason for getting a house house? Well, besides the fact that we really like working in the yard and sitting in the yard watching the squirrels, one of the main reasons for getting this house is to have a home for our three puppies, who are not really three puppies, they're three old men dachshunds that need just the perfect home and I've always wanted them to have the perfect home. I always thought it should be acres. They, they need 10 acres of woodland with a pond in it to have the perfect home. Rightfully so. Yeah, but I don't think that's going to happen and they are getting older. So I want to turn this backyard and the front yard into a perfect home for them in their old age and so that while Parma and I are away in Europe, that they can live a life that they deserve. For those of you who don't know, them personally, our puppies. Uh, we have Babu and Nesta and Pippin. They're three brothers from the same litter. Now how often in this day and age of this in the world today do three brothers get to be born together, grow up together, and be old men together? I just think that's so cool and they deserve that. Yes, yes they do.